Hi, Craig Sigal here from the Mental Toughness Academy. Today I have a special guest on my show. It is Aaron Locks. This man runs youth sports programs all across the country. He's had 125,000 kids go through his camps and programs. He teaches officials, coaches. He works with 45, 50 cities. He has worked with some of the best coaches of all time in professional sports, college. He has been a an official himself. He's done just about everything you can in youth sports and a lot in the pro and profession and college ranks. Welcome, Aaron, to my show. I'm glad to be here, man. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> We're doing some cool things together here, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's been quite an adventure. Yep. We, uh, Aaron uh, and I put together, um, it's all him, really, um, <laughs> our program for how to be a great sports coach, a successful, the secrets of successful youth sports coaches from his vast experience, and we got another one coming out for parents and how to be a great sports parent. So the first thing I'd like to ask you, Aaron, if there was one thing that you see parents do that is destructive or negative or doesn't help the, the young athletes, off the top of your head, what's the thing that comes to mind? You know, it's funny because I get this question asked a lot. I bet you. I really do. And it's funny because part of me says, wait, 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 wait. Parents really aren't the bad guys here. I think it's a combination of what has to happen to help the parents be more engaged in a way that's positive. But what ends up happening is when we immediately say, well, what is the problem with the parents? Well, you know what? U sports doesn't run without the parents. So I think we've got to find a way so that the parents understand their role and how to help their child maximize the experience. The biggest challenge I see with the parents is they're either not informed or are trying to do too much because no one's given them the boundaries and the balance in terms of what they're supposed to do. So it's just lack of knowledge. Yeah, I mean, I don't, again, I don't want to tell any parent that they don't have knowledge, yeah, yeah, yeah. but specific knowledge in terms of, you know, simple things. You know, if my daughter's out there playing softball, right, and she's up there ready to bat, the coach is telling her because she's nervous. Mia's little. She's, she's new, right? So she said, don't swing at the first pitch. Let the first one feel comfortable in the box, right? Well... My wife's out there going, come on, honey, you can do it. Let's go, baby, hit the ball. And now, again, she's not a bad lady, obviously. She's just trying to encourage my daughter. Well, it's a conflicting message for the coach, you see. And also, he's trying to figure out, well, how do I teach this young girl? And it's a really conflicting message for the young girl. My daughter Mia is sitting there going, okay, wait a second. Do I listen to coach? He said, just don't worry about it. Relax, get comfortable. Or my mom will say, go swing the bat. Well, mom feeds me, so she usually wins. <laughs> ah, yeah. If there was one coach and one lesson or learning that you got that sticks with you, that you really find... Uh, drives you or motivates you or inspires you in your teaching, what might that be? You know, there's one that's very easy, uh, and that's the story of when I was seven years old, my first youth sports experience. You know, I tell this story on almost every coach clinic, so if you heard it, I apologize. But he had such a profound impact on my life. And I've had, I could tell 30 or 40 different stories. I've just had amazing coaches. And some that you don't want to share in public because they've really <laughs> been pretty troublesome, as you can imagine. But... <laughs> I'll share this one. So I was seven years old. I grew up in Marin County, which is just north of San Francisco. And uh, my my dad had left when I was very young. And so I was basically the biggest sissy in the county. I was just the crybaby. And I never learned anything about competition or anything. So I can remember being real young and, and having no idea of what I wanted to do. And then one day my mom was kind of fed up because I was crying about stuff and this and that. And then next thing I know, she goes, hey, oh, by the way, guess what I did? I signed you up for baseball. I'm like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I never played baseball before. Next thing I know, she threw me in the back of the car and drove me down to the field. She dropped me off of the field, opened the door and said, there's your coach. And then that was it. Closed the door and drove off. So imagine I'm seven years old. I'm downtown Mill Valley. This man walks up and goes, hi, I'm Coach Islas. You must be Aaron. <clears throat> I didn't know anything about it. Next thing you know, I'm up there swinging the bat. So uh, obviously it worked out good, but here's the rest of the story. <laughs> so I get in the box and uh, we put the batting helmet on and he shows me the right end of the bat to hold and it's time for me to go to bat. So what happens the first time the ball is thrown at you? Of course, I was nervous. Well, I swung probably 10 or 15 times, didn't even come close to hitting the ball. So I started crying. I was bawling. Oh, my God. I threw the bat down, the helmet down, and just lost it. And I hear this voice. 
Are you kidding me? Pick it up right now. I just froze because nobody ever talked to me like that. He walks me over, grabs the bat, puts it in my hand, says, pick up the helmet. I'm holding it, standing there. Now remember, I'm seven years old and my first ever meeting this guy, I was really nervous. He sits me down in the corner of the dugout and says, this is where the bat goes. This is where the helmet goes. And he goes, what is going on? <laughs> What's the big deal? And I remember I was balling. I just said, I suck at baseball. I'm no good. He goes, time out. Hold up, hold up. Who's your favorite player? Now, again, I grew up next to San Francisco, so the only one that I really knew was Willie Mays. So, Willie Mays? And he said, Willie Mays? Don't you realize Willie Mays gets out seven out of ten times? No. Don't you realize he strikes out half of those times? No. So why at seven are you going to be better than Willie Mays? You know what? That was 43 years ago. And I remember that story like it was yesterday. Speaking of yesterday, or last weekend as it were, I got to hang out with Coach Islis. We're still really good friends, and we've been that way my entire adult life. So really cool experience.